Three years ago I bought a new laptop, the HP Spectre X360 and this one I have running now for three years with Linux so I want to talk a little bit on how good this laptop kept up with me and uh, yeah what my experience running Linux on this one is so if you're interested in this stay tuned and let's get started So this is my HP Spectre X360 13 inch model that came out three years ago, 2000 and uh, what is it, 19? Yeah. And this is the one that's running the Intel Whiskey Lake architecture. And uh, this concrete model number is written down here. It's uh, the 13 inch. Let me zoom in a little bit here. There you go. The 13 inch model, it's the 13AP0312NG model. And this one I have running with Linux since the beginning, basically. I did some videos in German where I was talking about it. So let's take a little tour around the device to see what happened with this device after three years of usage. Of course, the rubber has been used here on the bottom and on the top as well a little bit. And uh, what we can see is that the hinges are a little bit used. I have to say I barely ran it really in tablet mode because it has the option to uh, just simply open up 360 degrees and I can open it up and uh, have it running in tent mode or as a tablet. And uh, yeah, this one I barely, barely used, I have to say. And uh, yeah, the hinges. They are a bit used, as you can see here, the plastic or the chrome kind of feeling of the hinge disappeared here as well a little bit. So yeah, that's interesting to see. Otherwise the ports, the ports are still okay, I would say. Here we have a USB-C port, which is cleverly done here in the edge, which is pretty cool because then you have the possibility to have the cable going um, backwards for charging, very handy. Then we have another USB-C port and we have a headphone jack, which is also pretty interesting for three and a half millimeter headphone jack. I had quite some trouble with this one, but we talk about it later. Then we have a nifty cool feature, the possibility to turn off your webcam here with a hardware switch. And we have a micro SD card reader, which uh, is not the best. <laughs> Let's keep it at this. And we have also a USB-A port here, as well as on the edge here. Again, this is the power button, which is pretty handy as well. Yeah, the whole design kept up pretty good. You see, I have this blue kind of design, HP logo in golden silver, I would say. And uh, we have Spectre printed here on the hinge itself. Anything? No, this is everything uh, printed here. And yeah, the device hold it up, hold up pretty okay, I would say. Even if I open it up, you can see a little bit of dust here on the keyboard, but the keyboard itself also hold up pretty nicely. And uh, yeah, what I can tell you, this is the Core i7 8th gen uh, of Intel um, processors that's inside here. Then we have also the display. Oops, let me show you the display. Also pretty nice display, 120 hertz actually that I can use here on this display. ACD IPS display, pretty nice as well. And yeah, also holding up pretty Okay, you can see I can scroll here around with the touch, touch screen because this display also has a touch screen because otherwise it doesn't make sense as a tablet. I'm running Linux here. This is uh, Neptune, my own Linux distribution based upon Debian 11. And yeah, this is working fine so far, but I want to talk a little bit about the issues uh, that I encountered with this device running Linux throughout the years. Let's talk about the software and Linux running on this. I have running here Linux kernel 5.14.8, so not the newest version, but uh, almost everything is working. So I have uh, touchscreen support, as you can see here, it's working fine in Chromium and Firefox, whatever I like to have. Um, this is working fine. I can minimize stuff. I can navigate through stuff. I can click on stuff, double click to go into my file manager, close the file manager, no issues at all with this. So touchscreen is working fine. The speakers you might have heard are working fine as well. 
Though uh, the upper tweeters here, I never could make working the Bang & Olufsen setup that we have here. So the upper tweeters I in three years could not make work. The only thing that is working are the down firing speakers left and right, which uh, are firing yeah, pretty loud sound here, you can see it in the edge. Uh, pretty loud sound and bass heavy sound. It's good. They can become loud. There's no issues at all with this But it's a bit of a bummer that I cannot get the full setup working on Linux, which is uh, I tried HDA uh, Retask uh, Jack Retask already and tried to play with settings there Some people posted that it's working for them on similar HP Spectres or NVX 360 laptops But it's not working for me so this is that. Um, then all the keys, which is interesting, all the F keys here, or function keys, are working pretty nicely. So even the privacy shield function, this is, which is on F1, if I press this, you can see screen changes. And this is for, uh, if you go left and right, you can see it gets completely white. You cannot read everything. If you're on a plane or in a train and you don't want your neighbor reading your stuff, you can turn on this privacy feature, which is pretty nice. Then what I really like is that the screen really is a very good screen. It gets bright, not as bright for sunny situations to sit directly in sunlight, but a 1080p screen, 120 hertz. Okay. So it has 120 hertz and of refresh rate that you might can see here, which is pretty nice. It's super fluid in, in this situation. So you're running KD Plasma, my own Neptune distribution, by the way. And uh, yeah, super fluid. Uh, the function keys for brightness are working as well. As you can see, I can make it very dim, even turn off the backlit completely and have 5% here, which is like uh, also very, very dark and go up to 100%, which is nice. All the other function keys are working. Even the function key for setting up the um, backlit of the keyboard itself. Now it's on. I'm not sure if you can see it. There we go. It's on now and I can turn it and this is full brightness, I can turn it half brightness, which is like this. And I can turn it uh, completely off if I want to. So this is working. Uh, the keys for controlling the, the, the volume also working very nice. You get blubbing in the background, making this noise when I change the sound. Also the, the, the keyboard row for playback, pause and skip next tracks and airplane mode are working fine. The only thing that I did not make working even with some kernel hacks is this mute button. It should like light up. It has a small little LED there, but it's now muted. And now I unmute it, but the light just stays off. Uh, the light, the little LED light for the uh, caps lock is working fine as you might see there. So caps lock key. Uh, light is working fine, but the mute button is not working fine. Even with the HP mute kernel setting that I tried out, uh, it doesn't light up. Uh, touchscreen, as I said, is working fine. The orientation kind of thing for the touchscreen. Is it working? Let's see. It's not working, as you can see here. I had a script for this, like a small little Python script that made it working. But now it's not working. But you can make it working with a little Python script if you want to. Otherwise, if I yeah, turn it to tablet mode, I can tap here. I can move the mouse touchpad. It's turning off, so there's no issue with this. Uh, on KD Plasma Wayland, the rotation works automatically. You don't have to have a script. I turn the script off because sometimes I'm reading in a bed like this and then it's like flipping the screen, which is not what I want. Um, otherwise, yeah, this is working fine. The keys are working fine. Key, key travel is working fine. It's a little bit of annoying sometimes to fit this uh, pipe button here. I know it's a German keyboard layout, but the pipe button here is wrong. It should be there on the German keyboard, usually be in between the uh, shift and uh, Y button. And I think, yeah, this is the wrong position. I'm always searching for this and uh, could not get, get used to this, I have to say. Uh, these buttons I like pretty much. First I thought ah, the, key, the enter key is a little bit small, but no, it is working nicely, especially the, um, uh, the up and down buttons here for, uh, for the picture. What is it uh, called in English? I don't know. Um, the page up and page down, I think it's called. And these buttons are very nicely when you're working with the console or terminal on Linux. You can just uh, get uh, your command history um, with this one, which is pretty nice. Um, otherwise, the, the button for uh, deleting is also pretty nice uh, placed here. 
Uh, the print button is up here, which is also pretty nice. Some other, I think Lenovo ones place them down here somewhere, which is like also totally awkward. So most of the buttons I like here on this uh, device. Uh, let's go back to the Linux experience. So touchscreen, as I told you, is working fine. I can interact with the uh, device uh, pretty fine. Uh, the only problem, this is why you see the energy monitor here, is um, after three years, I cannot run this uh, guy in turbo mode. As you can see here, there's a little turbo that's uh, deactivated. Uh, performance mode, CPU governor, but by, the, by default it's power safe and you have balance and performance here, which is I think pretty good because up to uh, 1400, 1500 gigahertz, uh, one megahertz, so 1.5 gigahertz roughly and goes down to 300 megahertz. You can go to power mode if you want to save power, then it goes to 800 megahertz or even 600 megahertz, I think. Um, it's going 900 because it's doing something in the background, but usually like this uh, you have balance power even which is fine-tuning and then you get go into performance mode if you do want to do video rendering or something like this and you can go even into here performance mode which will run it at the highest clock speed uh, 1.8 1 gigahertz but with turbo or turbo it will go up to 4 gigahertz as you can see here it's running now at 4 gigahertz which is pretty nice and this one I cannot keep up for long. Now it's three gigahertz, but in turbo mode, it's like holding this high frequency and you get like the best of the best, especially when you compile a lot or do video rendering, which is pretty on Linux, mostly not using the GPU. So uh, especially Intel v VAA uh, PI is not working so good here for video rendering or for all codecs. So this will overheat the laptop. After three years, really, it's now the uh, year, the, the, the third year, I noticed that I have to replace probably the thermal paste because it's overheating constantly if I have the turbo mode on. I noticed and read on some forums that other people suffer the same issue with turbo mode on. So I just turned it off. And since then, uh, basically no overheating. I have balanced performance and power save usually on. And now, especially if uh, I'm not plugged in, and by the way, the cable also very interesting. It has such a nice material here holding up pretty nicely. Uh, yeah, such a soft material that is pretty good. Uh, USB-C, of course, 65 watts. So you can also charge it with some of your phone chargers eventually if they have 65 watts. It's also pretty nice and working. And uh, yeah, power, talking about power. This is um, a problem I had to tweak a little bit more because there's an SK Hynix. SSD inside and you know that they made some issues or had some issues three years ago. That means that I really am running my own kernel here, the 5.14.8 Neptune kernel, because I had to patch the SK Hynix standby drainage problem patches in here so that when I go into sleep mode that it will not drain the battery ultra fast. So this is why I had to patch this. So this is a big annoyance, I would say. You can, I think, replace the SSD. I'm not sure if I saw that this is replaceable. I did not open it up any uh, in this three years, so I don't know. Otherwise, um, yeah, what can you say about this device? This is um, one of the major drawbacks. I think the power usage is not the best. And even after three years, I think it's still holding up pretty okay-ish on Linux. So what it's showing me here is like uh, it's completely charged. I plugged it in now. It takes a while also for detecting that I unplug the, the, the power cord uh, when I'm having it fully charged, which is a bit uh, weird. But otherwise, when I'm running this one, it's around 8, 9 watts, maybe 10 watts, depending on what, if I have like my external mouse attached via a uh, USB receiver or something like this. Usually what I do when I unplug it is uh, go into PowerTop and uh, run uh, sudo PowerTop uh, auto-tune, which automatically tunes, uh, yeah, I can make it a little bit bigger, auto-tune, which automatically tunes every parameter for it to not suck so much energy. And uh, let's just run it here. And uh, of course I have to type in my password correctly. It's doing its thing and the living power top that you can even run it on auto start if you want to now let's take a look at uh, power top here to check the values yeah. i unplugged the cable and now it's showing me six hours and 42 minutes left this is not the true value that i really get because if i start browsing or searching stuff around you will have like about five hours max 
So uh, PowerTop is showing me 8 watts that it's currently using here uh, with this connection. By the way, one very um, good thing that you have to do is like uh, tunables, everything is good here. Uh, what I only think is when, if I have a mouse plugged in external mouse, I just turned off the auto suspend for the USB device for, for, for the mouse, for example. Otherwise, it will freeze every few seconds, which is super annoying. And uh, yeah, um, 8 watts, it's not 5 watts even taking here only, and it, the remaining time is 10 hours. But this is not realistic, I have to say, because as soon as you start working with, with your touchpad or other things, it will go down. So five hours, max six hours is what you will get. And uh, this um, battery indicator here is not very accurate because sometimes I have, I'm under 10 and suddenly I get zero and it says in 30 seconds I'm turning myself off. Um, what I set up here is that it goes into sleep mode. Sleep mode can also use a bit of power because it's S2 idle only. So it is basically running the whole system in the background still. So it's not a deep sleep. Uh, which is a bit of problematic. So what I set up here under Linux is that it goes first into, I can show you this in the settings, it goes first into the standby mode and um, then uh, on critical it will not go into standby mode, it will go into the deep uh, suspend to um, disk mode, which is pretty interesting because then uh, you can have everything saved and it saves, of course, power. So what I do is like I have a script set up. You can set it up in your settings as well, which will then run this uh, for, I think, three hours in standby. And when you don't turn it on after three hours, it will go automatically to suspend to disk to save a bit of power because the otherwise the drainage in suspend mode is a bit too high uh, for the battery. And you just take it out of your um, bag and it's completely empty and you have to charge it again. So this is what I noticed. Charging is a bit of a problem as well. I had a problem where when this is running out of power, I close the lid and I turn it on with this. It is charging ultra slow. I don't know what it's, what, what's wrong there. So the only thing I can make it charge is either have it running or I really, really, um, yeah, have it in, uh, not in standby mode, have it in uh, turned off, then it will charge. Otherwise, it will charge ultra slow for some reason in standby mode, which I don't, maybe also an S2 idle issue. And I heard that the kernel 515 will, will solve some issues there. But as this was running the SK uh, Hynix SSD and I had to patch the kernel to get to good standby time. So this is why I have running 514.8 here. I did not update to 5.15 yet, so or 5.16, uh, which is, I think, the current stable. So this is what we have here uh, running. These are the issues that I encountered. The webcam here in the top is working fine. If you use cheese, you have, to, of course, the, the, the flap here that you turn on for the webcam to be recognized, 1080p webcam. Uh, Camoso, I could not make a run here on KD Plasma for some reason. It's only turning on the uh, IR, IR uh, face detection uh, camera module, but not the normal one, which is not ideal for, for uh, chatting and so on. But all the other apps, uh, Skype, I tried here. I tried uh, Zoom. I tried, uh, what's it called? Uh, this other Cisco kind of client, I think it is for video chatting working fine without any issues with the uh, webcam. So webcam is working fine, touchscreen is working fine. The device itself is a pretty nice and good device. Uh, the bezel, bezels are a bit big as you can see, especially where the HP logo is. Why such a big bezel? I don't know. And the device itself, if the, the speakers are used, unusable, not very useful here, the top ones could be a bit smaller. This is one reason why I I'm switching to a new laptop. Um, another reason is I never could make this fingerprint scanner work. I don't know. Uh, I think the drivers for this are still missing for Linux. So there's no option to use this fingerprint scanner on Linux. So I have this device here where most of the things I'm not really using, the touchscreen even, I'm not often using. Sometimes I touch on the screen instead of because it's a bit easier than finding your mouse and pointing on stuff, especially if you don't have like a real mouse there, only the touchpad. The touchpad itself, yeah, it's okay. It's a large one. It's a bit of wide one as well. I think a bit too wide because when you're typing, you, you are moving the, the, the mouse cursor. So you have to set up um, the keyboard to turn off the touchpad. 
the port selection is fine the only thing that i don't like is if i have to find like uh, such a usb-c hub with an hdmi out because sometimes i want to do like hdmi out and uh, then i have to plug it in here and it's draining of course extra power because this hub has also ethernet and vga also sometimes useful to have an ethernet because there's otherwise no ethernet and some more usb-a uh, things this, this is the usual problems that you run into when you're having a ultra book with uh, less and less ports but it's a good device i like the 120 hertz display here very much uh, which is pretty pretty fast and uh, yeah um, brightness could be a bit better because you can see now it's like very reflective and you can see myself here uh, doing the recording so i like to have this version maybe slightly updated matte screen um, don't like this a bit smaller um, would be pretty nice uh, but otherwise if you're searching for a laptop and this one is pretty ch you can get it pretty cheap it is a powerhouse definitely that's basically it for the hp specter x360 so what do you think about my experience with the hp specter x360 uh, running linux uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, tablet-like design? Are you willing to buy or did you buy such thing and, and are you really using it? No, it's not flipping over, but doesn't matter. Um, mine has a little bit of bumps here and there. You can see that thing here slightly bended already here, this part. But otherwise, I think it holds up for three years pretty nicely. It's a good device. I really like to use it still but like i said the overheating and the battery life i really get better battery life with newer devices now and yeah four cores eight frets sometimes you can run into a little bit of an issue if you want to compile something quickly and it takes a little bit longer especially if you want to compile a cute web engine a chromium blink engine or something like this firefox it it is working hard very and you cannot activate turbo there for getting the best out of speed it's getting a bit annoyed annoying and um yeah i'm looking for something new do you have some tips and tricks which one of those laptops are you interested in if you have some questions regarding the hp spectra x360 whiskey lake version ap03 what was it uh wrote it down 0312 ng then you can uh, write it down in the comment section if you have figured out a way to make the tweeters the bottom the, the top firing is it top firing yes top firing speakers uh work here on this one with linux just tell me i tried everything did not work fingerprint reader i probably don't get to work but yeah if you have some questions if you have some tips and tricks uh, running linux on this laptop uh, write it down in the comment section that's everything for this longer video i think but i think sometimes very interesting for some people an experience report running linux on such a device uh, such an ultra book what do you think about this? Write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.